Good day everyone, we are the Fervent 5 group and today we are going to discuss about notes payable. Let us first discuss about the definition of notes payable. So notes payable are obligations supported by debtor promissory notes. Debtor meaning yung nangutang and nag-issue ng promissory note. As we all know, promissory note is a written contract or agreement between two parties kung saan yung debtor ay nangangako kung kailan niya babayaran yung utang and kung ano yung conditions na napag-usapan nila. So notes payable is governed by the standards of PFRS 9 since Notes payable or promissory notes is a financial instrument, particularly a financial liability. So that's why under siya ng PFRS 9. Next is the recognition. Kailan nga ba nire-recognize ang notes payable? So it is recognized when entity becomes a party to the contract or when the transfer of resources transpired. Kapag halimbawang bumili ka ng equipment and then nag-issue ka ng promissory note, tapos na-acquire mo na or na-transfer na sa resources, that's when it is recognized. Next is the presentation. Notes payable is presented in the liability section and can either be a non-current and current liability. Non-current siya kapag one-time payment and more than a year to pay. Current liability siya kapag less than a year to pay. So, meron tayong illustration dito. As we can see, meron current person current person ng liability and meron ding non-current. So, ang notes payable ay merong net carrying value. And to get that, we have this formula, face amount less discount on notes payable is equals to net carrying value of notes payable. Next is the measurement. For measurement purposes, notes payable are classified into short-term and long-term payable. Short-term siya kapag nagmamature one year or less. Long-term kapag nagmamature beyond one year. So parang katulad lang dun sa non-current and current liability. Next is the initial measurement. So notes payable are initially recognized at fair value minus transaction cost. Transaction cost meaning yung uh, cost na na-incur sa pag issue ng promissory note. However, the standard or yung PFRS 9, inaalaw niya yung short-term payable na i-measure sa face amount. Face amount meaning kung magkano yung stated sa promissory note. Since the difference or yung kaibahan daw between face amount and fair value is immaterial. Dahil ang short-term payable, hindi siya risky unlike sa long-term payable. So take note that in the absence of fair value, it should be measured at present value. So kapag walang fair value, sa present value siya i-measure. Next is the subsequent measurement. So notes payable are considered financial liability as I've said. Kaya i-measure siya subsequently at amortized cost using the effective interest method. So next, for the summary of measurement, as we can see in the table, for short-term payable, initially measured at face amount or present value. Subsequently measured at face amount kapag ang initial measurement ay face amount and at amortized cost kapag ang initial measurement ay present value. So kapag naman long-term payable with reasonable interest rate, it is initially measured at face amount and subsequently measured at face amount as well. Kapag naman long-term non-interest bearing payable and long-term payable with unreasonable rate, both are initially measured at present value and both are subsequently measured at amortized cost. So next, uh, sa ating summary for treatment kapag ka interest bearing liabilities and non-interest bearing liabilities. So, merong karakteristik ang interest bearing liabilities. Kapag ang nominal rate in nominal interest rate approximates the prevailing market rate, meaning almost equal sila, ang measurement ay face amount. However, kapag naman yung nominal interest rate ay substantially different with market rate, kapag malaki yung diferensya, ang measurement na gagamitin ay present value of principal plus present value of interest payments. Kapag naman sa non-interest bearing liabilities, kapag ang karakteristik ay issued solely for cash, ang measurement natin, present value is equal to cash. Kapag naman issued for non-cash assets, halimbawang bumili ka ng non-cash assets, tapos nag-issue ka ng promissory note, ang measurement niya ay present value either na equal either of the following in order of priority. Ibig sabihin, 
laging una yung cash price equivalent. Kapag hindi available yung cash price equivalent or kapag hindi siya given at saka lang siya i-measure at present value of principal payments. Meron kaming binigay na mga sample problem para mas maintindihan natin yung notes payable. Problem 1. Issuance of interest bearing note lump sum. Ano yung bearing note? Yung bearing note is yung may binigay na interest or patong yung principal borrower. Meron pa isang klase ng bearing note, which is non-bearing note. Yung non-bearing note naman is walang binigay na interest yung principal borrower. Now, On January 1, 2008, Shizu Company acquired a machine from Sasuke Company in light of cash payment. Shizu gave Sasuke a 3-year payment, 600,000 payment per year, and 3% note payable. Principal is due on December 31, 2020, but interest is due annually every December 31. The prevailing interest rate for this type of note is 10%. Ano ang iniintanong? Compute for the carrying amount of the note payable on December 31, 2018. So, let's proceed to the solution. The note bears an annual interest of 3% which is significantly. Why significantly? Because yung interest na 3% ay mas mababa sa market rate na 10%. With this, the note should be initially recognized on January 1, 2018 at present value of principal and interest payment. To compute the present value of notes payable, we need to add the present value of principal and the present value of interest payments. Present value of principal is 600,000 times 0.7513, a total of 450,780. Paano na po yung 0.7513? Ginamitan natin siya na present value factor of 1. While the present value of interest payment is 600,000 times 3% interest times 2.4869, a total of 44,764. Now, in addition, The present value of notes payable is 495,544. So, kung mapapansin nyo, minature natin yung problem into present value. Why? Kasi yung problem na binigay is walang nakamensure na future value. Next, subsequently, it will be measured at amortized cost. The following table shows the amortization of the note. So, dun sa table, naka-indicate na yung mga formula. Like the interest payment, face amount times the interest, 600,000 times 3% equals to 18,000. Interest expense, 10% of present value, 495,544 times 10% equals to 49,554. Discount amortization, interest expense less than interest payment, 49,554 less than 18,000 equals to 31,554. That way, the carrying amount on December 31, 2018 will be 527,099 pesos. It will be recorded at the non-current liability. Why? Because the principal amount of the note is payable beyond one year from the reporting date. In journal entry, to record the issuance of the notes, debit machinery, 495,544, debit discount on notes payable, 104,456 credit notes payable, 600,000. To record interest payments, debit interest expense, 18,000, credit cash, 18,000. To record amortization of discount, debit interest expense, 31,554, credit discount on notes payable, 31,554. Problem number two: Issuance of non-interest bearing note with one-time payment of principal. This is non-interest bearing note, tapos one-time payment lang. So ano ang tinatanong? How much is the amount that should be recorded as a net liability on December 31, 2018 at the year end? So let's read the problem. On January 1. 2018, ABC Company acquired a machine. So, bumili daw siya ng machine from Ace Company. In lieu of cash payment, dahil walang pambayad, nagbigay siya ng promissory note. Tapos, payable within 3 years. Face amount of 600,000. And of course, non-interest bearing. So, wala daw interest. Kailan naman daw ang bayaran? December 31, 2020, the prevailing rate of the interest for this type of road. Ibig sabihin, yung market rate or kalakaran is 10%. So, ito magiging EIR or effective interest rate. 
makikita nyo naman sa chart which is you can see the chart with the flow of the problem so you can get easily paano naman i-compute? madali lang so sa pre present value lang ng principal kasi hindi naman binigay ang cash price equivalent so if given yun, yun yung magiging priority dahil hindi siya given ang computation natin ay present value of principal amount lang as you can see above the formula of present value which is present value of 1 is equal to 1 plus interest raised to negative number of periods. 600 face amount and 10% market rate. 600,000 times 0 0.7513. Saan naman galing yung 0 0.7513? Doon sa 1.10 raised to negative 3. And the answer is... 0.75. 600,000 times 0 0.7513 is equal to 450,780 as of January 1, 2018. Eh, ang hinahanap ay December 31, 2018. So, saan naman ang galing yung 45,078? Yung 450,780 times mo lang siya sa 10%. Yun yung answer sa interest expense. Then, para naman makuha yung present value ng December 31, 2018. 450,780 plus 45,078 is equal to 495,858. And then, ganun din. Yung 495,858 times mo lang siya sa 10% para makuha mo yung present value ng 2019. And ganun din kagawin sa 2020. Therefore, the carrying amount on December 31 is 495,858. Saan daw ipepresent? Again, ng current liability section. Bakit po? Kasi, di ba, payable lang siya one-time payment at the end of the three years or third year payment ng kabuan. So, lahat yung precedent at non-current liability. Loans Payable What is loans payable? It is similar to notes payable. It is also supported by formal promise to pay a certain sum of money at a specific future dates. However, the term loans payable can be used to connote bank loans and similar types of financing. So, dito sa loans payable, um, sabi, similar daw sa, sa notes payable. No? Siyempre, supported din siya ng promise to pay. Siyempre, pag nangutang ka, no? which is the loans, uh, siyempre, kailangan mo siyang bayaran. No? Uh, babayaran mo siya sa kung ano ang pinag-usapan niyo kung kailan siya dapat nabayaran, no? Etong term din daw na loans payable ay pwedeng gamitin, no? To connote bank loans and similar types of financing. The next, um, the, ori the origination fees. Dito sa first bullet, um, ang ano lang ito, it simply means na Ito yung charge or yung payment kapag nag-process ng loan sa banko. Then, the second one is, halimbawa, nag-loan uh, siya sa bank, diba? Tapos, dinadock na yung origination or service fee, diba? Sa amount na ilo-loan ng borrower. Kung baga, yung amount na binawas na yun, yun yung fee sa pag-process ng loan. Then, dito, origination fees are deducted. No? Deducted siya um, from the carrying amount of the loan and subsequently amortized using the effective interest method. Amount on loan amortization. So, meron tayo ditong given problem. You want to acquire a car with a cash price of 2 million through a 12 month auto loan that requires equal month and payments. The effective interest rate is 12%. So, bibili ka ng kotse na nagkakalaga ng 2 million. 12 months auto loan siya, which means 12 months mo siyang babayaran. And dun sa 12 months na yun, kailangan equal payment yung gagawin mo. Ang um, hinahanap natin dito sa given is yung monthly payment at interest expense on the loan. So, yung requirement A is um, para mahanap natin yung future cash flow, kailangan muna natin alamin yung PV factor at present value. So, may given na tayong present value which is 2 million. At yung present value is i-compute natin ng 1 plus 1% raised to 12. Yung 1%, um, dinivide natin yung interest rate dun sa months of payment natin which is 12 months. So, ang makukuha natin sagot is um, 
Yung 11.25 na yan, i-divide natin yan sa ating present value na 2 million. And yung makukuha natin yung sagot, ay 177,697.58 at ito yung ating monthly payment. So, para naman makuha yung interest expense, um, yung monthly payment, i-multiply natin siya sa number of payment on the loan, which is makuha natin yung sagot na 2,132,370.96. And dun naman natin ilalas yung um, 2 million na present value. So, total cash payments minus present value equals total interest expense of 132,371. So, um, makikita natin dito sa table yung 12 months computation of interest expense. So, yung present value na 2 million, imumultiply siya sa 1% ang nakuha natin kanina at magkakaroon tayo ng sagot na 20,000 na interest expense para sa first month. Uh, at pag nabuo itong 12 months of interest expense na ito, makukuha natin yung sagot na 132,371. So, secured loan. Um, secured loan, meron tong collateral security para sa mga lenders na pwede nilang kunin sa borrower if hindi sila makapagbayad. Examples are mortgage loan and chattel mortgage. So, mortgage loan, ito yung mga real property gaya ng house, um, lupa, or yung mga buildings na pwedeng kunin ng isang bank if ever na yung borrower is may default in terms of payment. Yung chattel mortgage naman ay yung movable personal property ng isang borrower na pwedeng kunin ng bank katulad ng kotse, alahas, at livestock. Um, credit lines. Credit line, ito yung um, nagbibigay ang bank or financial institu institution ng maximum amount na kayang iyugtay ng isang borrower. Isang advantage nito ay yung borrower's interest. Kasi may charge, um, yung interest na yon is charge lang dun sa amount na hiniram niya. For example, nang hiram ka ng 100,000. So, meron kang maximum amount of 100,000 na pwedeng hiramin. So, ngayon, ang kailangan mo pa lang is 20,000. And yung 20,000 na kukunin mo na yun, yun pa lang yung lalagyan nila ng interest. Hindi yung maximum um, amount na binigay sa'yo. So, ayun, mas, ma mas preferred ang credit lines or ang credit lines kaysa sa loan in terms of interest kasi mas mas hindi ganun kalaki yung interest na kailangan mong bayaran at yung amount lang na hinihiram mo yung lalagyan nila ng interest. Um, credit card. Credit card is used para gamitin or para manghiram ng pera. For um, credit purchases, pwede rin itong gamitin as um, building tools for your credit. Kasi important siya for bigger investment tulad ng mga bahay. Pwede rin siyang gamitin sa um, car damage, yes, ganun. So, restoration. Um, yun nga, for, um, for some market or credit purchases. Yung commercial paper naman, ito yung ini-issue ng isang firm's investors kapag kailangan nila ng mabilis ang pera. For example, kailangan ng firm ng 100,000 for business funding. So, yung firm itself, mag issue siya ng commercial paper na for example is 101,000 in exchange of 100,000 in cash. So, yung 1,000 na yun, yun yung interest payment mo dun sa ginawa mong commercial paper which is equivalent siya sa 1%.